So I've started studying historical martial arts. That means I own a sword. It also means I own a sword that looks like everybody else's sword. So I'm going to show you a process of how we can decorate your sword in a way that's actually historically accurate and it's pretty easy to do at home. We're going to be using a process called etching. Etching was used on arms and armor in history and was also used to make a lot of cool art. Today we use it for circuit boards and that's how I learned these techniques. Before I start, I'm going to protect the sword from the acid as best I can. I don't want any of it getting in the hilt assembly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a plastic bag and slide it over the end of the sword. Uh, we really want to make extra sure that nothing gets into that assembly in there, so I'm going to flip it over. Um, and then I'm actually just going to use masking tape. So now I'm going to take my actual design, which is a vinyl transfer with uh, contact paper on it. I'm going to burnish it a little bit onto the paper. Burnishing it is just, you know, rubbing it, making sure that the, that it transfers really well. There's not too many little details, but there's some islands in the design that float off from everything else. So I got to make sure that those get transferred. And now I'm going to plop this down right here. <laughs> I'm going to burnish this again. Now you notice there's a lot of exposed steel in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the masking tape and just start masking that off. Uh, like so. So I've removed the uh, backing on the vinyl, uh, which you should do before you start taping stuff down because you'll tape over it. And I'm just trying to mask off every visible piece of steel. And then I'm going to make sure I've got all the nooks and crannies covered really tightly. The nice thing is I'm not doing a bath which the, with this, which is really messy. Much more of the acid on your hands when you're done. Uh, you know, and it would be almost impossible to avoid getting the rest of the blade or the hilt into the acid. The reason you don't want that is that the acid, I mean, it it's acid. It eats away a little bit at everything that it comes into contact with. And because there's really tight tolerances inside the hilt, it would make your hilt rattly. Um, and if there's places where something's peened, it could make it weak enough that it could maybe fall off. Um, and you don't want your peen to fall off. <laughs> so you can see the uh, plastic bags taped up here, all the metal's covered, the metal's covered on the back. Um, there's no easy seams for it to get in, but again I'm not dunking it so I have to be super careful. And then I'm just going to continue with adding some strips down here. Uh, six inches or so of the sword past the ricasso wrapped. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to make a little reservoir. This was just an idea I had at the last minute of a way to sort of keep everything a little more contained. I don't know how well the hot glue is going to contain it because you know hot glue being hot glue but if it doesn't work um, I've got a contingency plan that I know works so and there we go we got a little acid pool. There's some stringy bits here I'm gonna pick off and I think I'm good to go. All right now I get to the actual etching. There's many ways that you can make an etch. The most common probably is what's called a bath which is submersing the object that you want to etch in the etchant. The etchant I'm using is called ferric chloride. You can get it off Amazon for pretty cheap. Now I've mostly etched copper and there's another technique that you can use for copper that helps accelerate the process. It takes using a sponge and scouring the surface while it is being etched. I alternated soaking for 5 minutes with scouring for 1 minute for a total of 40 minutes. You don't want to reuse the same fluid because this has bits of metal in it and it will etch more slowly. I should point out, because I haven't yet, that this process is dangerous. You are working with acid. You don't want to get it on your skin, your clothes, and your eyes. And you also can't just dump it down the sink when you're done. 
You should look up the laws for where you live of how to dispose of ferric chloride with metal dissolved in it. So let's talk about the outcome. First, the positives. It etched it all. I was a little dubious to see how long this would take, and I was also pretty nervous that I might ruin something with the metallurgy of the steel, which I admittedly know nothing about. Now, the negatives. I'm big on being transparent with my failures and just using them as a place to move forward. This didn't etch very deep, and uh, while I wasn't trying to etch super deep, I would have liked it to be slightly deeper. The other failure is that the vinyl peeled a little bit. I would use something like transfer blue or maybe the inkjet transfer method in the future. Overall though, I'm very happy with how this turned out. So my sword looks cool, but now I need to get halfway decent with using it. <laughs>